at this moment of time actually I'm applying to UNESCO to have it uh, included in the world's intangible culture list. There are several uh, other sports like in Greece, wrestling, traditional Olympic wrestling and so many more around the world but hobbling is not included because we never applied for it. And so now we're applying for it now and I'm convinced that it will be accepted because it's so unique. It's going back in Irish mythology, the old, old tradition always refers to hurling and one of the earliest written records in Ireland refers to hurling and it was very much part of uh, the Fenian the uh, mythology as well and mentioned in several of the Fenian poems about hurling and there was a great hurler called Fionn McCool and there was another guy called Coo Cullen. The only thing about Coo Cullen, he never won an all Ireland championship. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so it's, it's really a great game and uh, it's quite unique. The only game that I can compare with it is probably lacrosse to some extent. That was an Indian game. And hurling players, generally speaking, they can play lacrosse as well. And uh, a lot of young Irish people now, uh, Irish, I suppose, ancestry, are playing with Ireland in lacrosse, the Irish international lacrosse league the Americans because they've taken up the game and there's that connection then there's a connection with, with field hockey as well there's that connection uh, hollers generally are good hockey players too field hockey players the ones that decide to play it and then cricket there's that connection with cricket too and I, I was a PE teacher um, before I went into politics and I spent a few years in Strawberry Hill in London it was a, a, it was a teacher training college and um, they had a very good cricket team and it was around Twickenham and Richmond where they play a lot of cricket and the hullers, people from Cork and Tipperary, Kilkenny, um, were all Limerick, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Limerick really had a good team about 40 years ago <laughs> we came close <laughs> yeah, yeah, very close yeah. uh, but these guys because of the eye hand coordination that they got through hulling were great cricket players and they could have played with any, with Middlesex or any of those, if they wanted it. And there were scouts in there, I remember, from the county teams in, in England, which is where cricket is very big in, in the county scene in England. Uh, they were mad to get them, you know, signed up. But they were obviously uh, playing holding back at home with their clubs and so on. So there's that great transfer. And skill-wise, you know, it's that eye-hand coordination. It's a very fine skill. It's far more skillful than any football game. There's no doubt about it. It's far, I suppose, easier to watch now, more entertaining than Gaelic football, because Gaelic football has gone too uh, technical. It's gone, uh, they're just too. It's gone too tactical, where there's mass defences and it's ruining that free-flowing aspect of the game of Gaelic football. But hurling, because of its nature, because the <coughs> goalkeeper can, you know, puck a ball 120 yards. It switches around the field very quick, so it's very quick, very fast. So it's a, it's a great game and there were some great games in 2013 as you know and some of these games have been shown all over the world now and people are watching them because they can see that this game has special skill and uh, it's very good eye hand coordination as well but also you have to think very quick as well. So being in a place like Stanford where uh, this is I suppose where all I suppose the originality and the thought process of the world starts and the influences. So uh, I think the game of hurling is ideally suitable to uh, the people here who are uh, students here in Stanford, who are working here in various ways, because it's such a creative game, basically. So anyway, that's just an overview on hurling. My own county of Kerry is very much a Gaelic football county. We won our first All-Ireland in hurling, but the reason why they didn't, I suppose, persevere with it was the people who won the All-Ireland they came back to Tralee and they were left walk home in 1891. <laughs> but that was it. And it could have been a holding county more than a, a Gaelic football county. But even then they were pushing Gaelic football rather than holding, funny enough. But they, they're still in a pocket where Jod and myself come from, Con Morris. Uh, that's one of the barnies in Kerry where the Normans came. Um, incidentally, uh, the same kind of influence, I suppose, where the Normans had in Wexford and Tipperary and the other counties, Cork. Uh, they still play hurling there, and there are some parishes, they only play hurling there.
because of that tradition. So it's great that they've held on to that tradition. Our club, the Jor and myself, uh, I played for Jor, played for as well, and probably might go back and play for them again. Yeah. They'll need him. Old, um, <laughs> <laughs> never too old. Um, we play holding with one part of our parish, Lixna, and um, players like Paul Gallivan, who's a great footballer, many of you might know him. He's now into fashion in a big way. <laughs> He's really produced a very trendy kind of a trousers that <laughs> gone, gone viral at this stage. <laughs> uh, so, and um, Eamon Fismaris, who's now managing the Kerry football team, is a very good hurler too. So, in our football team in Finug, actually, 12 of them play in Lixnar hurling as well. So, there's a good crossover there. And both games complement each other because of the reaction especially reaction time uh, so they help each other in various ways and also for uh, strengthening your wrists as well and the wrist is very important in golf as you know and uh, hollers generally make very good golfers again because of that eye hand coordination so there are a lot of advantages uh, if you play hurling definitely apart from the fun and the camaraderie I would just suggest in there though what's your first name again Sean, uh, that in, in Ireland, if you played in your bare feet, that you may wind up losing your toes. <laughs> but one man did play in an All Ireland final from Tipperary called Babs Keating, a celebrated huller, and he scored uh, an amazing score. And actually, yeah, he had to take off his boots because they were skin and his feet the same day, so there is a precedent there for us. <laughs> we'll call Sean bad from now right? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, just to say as well, John Hartnett is here from, from Limerick, you probably know him from the Irish Technology Leadership Group, he set that up and doing a lot of work now for technology companies in Ireland and spawning new ones here in the valley as well, and Rory, I can only see her as well, Rory actually lives on the campus here more or less, and both of them have done an awful lot uh, for technology companies in Ireland and supporting startups and, and so on. So it's great to be here with you. I'm really delighted to be here with you. I played Gaelic myself for a long time uh, with my club. I played mostly in sympathy forwards with Terry. I got trapped corner back and <laughs> there for years. But I suppose if you're on a good team, you know, I suppose if you're in a good company, you don't have to be the CEO or the president all the time. <laughs> you can be in charge of a sector, which I was. Uh, so, uh, I was on a very good Kerry team, we won four All-Irelands in a row and uh, we would have won the fifth, only I broke my leg and I couldn't play. <laughs> and I'm remembered more now for the fact that I wasn't playing on the day than if I would have been playing. Because they all say if he was playing, I would have won. And coincidentally, that kind of changed my life as well, because I was coming to Berkeley to do a master's degree and I had all signed up and all for it, and I broke my leg, and then I went into politics, and that was the end of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's just great to be here with you and with my neighbor, John Gallivan, as well, and good wife over here, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> who is a fanatical supporter of the Stoll MSG, uh, which are our deadly enemies. It's like Berkeley, Stanford, like in basketball or whatever. <laughs> and her <laughs> like That uh, they allow this marriage to happen, <laughs> and it would happen between the soul and Tanu. <laughs> Tony, it's great to see you, Amy. Thanks very much, Jimmy. So, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, we take this green and gold with us everywhere. And uh, it's really something very special. You know, it's Kerry Gold. Uh, it's very popular over here now in California. Can't get enough of uh, butter products here. Uh, they're taken off the shelf immediately, and that's Kerry Gold. Now, this is green and gold. So. Uh, I brought this for your captain, just to hang it anywhere in Stanford. Yeah. Well, uh, from a very creative county to the center of creativity in the world, <laughs> it's my pleasure to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.